All right, next up, another really unique combination of digital evangelists who's coming to speak on one of our panels, just like Dr. Justin is, different panel. He's in the mental health arena, which is so powerful. But this human is literally taking what he knows and what the Lord has prompted him to share in connection to mental health via social media, obviously, but through the military. So it took a little bit of time, but eventually he decided I'm going to embrace all of who I am, despite what could happen with his career. And he started wearing his uniform in the way that he was sharing on TikTok. Now, hundreds of thousands of followers across many different accounts, his own podcast, Mr. Ryan Griffiths. Mr. Griffiths is what he goes by on all the social handles. He's going to come and he's going to share so authentically about the struggle and the battle of mental health connected to how you can become a digital evangelist and help people wholeheartedly help and serve people. Now he stepped into this whole realm of speaking, potentially a book in the future, just putting that plug out there. He has an agency that has helped him catalyze this career and the military is celebrating his service in a really dynamic way. So this is a lesson to just not be afraid to go for it. And when God is prompting you into something, you know, just a, no spirit of fear, no spirit of condemnation. Go boldly, be strong and courageous, and do it like Mr. Ryan Griffiths. Mr. Griffiths in the house. Let's go. Absolutely, you know, and I and I love it um, where I'm grounded and I'm founded, um, and just being a believer itself, you know, because when individuals get a hold of my videos and they see the number behind the following I have, you know, it's never it's never been about the followers to me. I was you can track down all my videos. It's when I had one follower to one million, so on and so forth. It's it's because of him and not me, you know, and I, I'm able to confidently believe that in my journey and everything that I'm pursuing. At the end of the day, uh, I've always said, if God's going to wake me up each and every morning with air in my lungs and a voice to speak, then I, I'll do it in his name. And I've been able to showcase that through millions of individuals on platforms. And it's just been a huge blessing. And I think individuals look at that when they see like, oh, this officer, this soldier is in the military. He has 1.8 million followers. What is he talking about? Why does people resonate so much with him? And they're like, he said Jesus in uniform. They're like, we can do that. Oh, he said he was struggling. We can do that. And then that's always the the conversation started like, are you not scared of doing that? I'm like, the day that I cannot do that is the day that I'll hang it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that gives people such permission in a way that they don't think that they can. It almost makes me correlate to like, the Pharisees and Sadducees versus the tax collectors and frauds and all the people that were hanging out with Jesus is like, Hey, I'm Jesus's friends. They were more vocal in sharing of the Messiah than the ones who were following the protocol, right? The rules Mm -hmm. and the regulations and signed on the dotted line. And so I, there's freedom. That's ultimately what it is that you're displaying for people and freedom from mental health. Sure. But just freedom to be who God made you to be and to use the voice that God gave you. You said breath in your lungs, like every single day, if there's breath, then you're meant to share. And I think our voice is a part of our vocation. And a lot of people are afraid, like they're locked out from being able to actually do anything because of fear of what other people will think, you know, fear of being held back, whatever that is. How did you develop your voice as a content creator? Um, Because I think that that's something a lot of people are afraid of. I don't want to get on camera, right? You, You work through a lot mentally in order to do what you do on a consistent basis. Yeah, that's a that's a good question as well, because I can remember when I first started, you know, I was 30 day, I was less than 30 days being back from Iraq and my younger brother and I um, was really struggling. We were struggling together. And then we went on this journey for a whole year to become sober. And that's really kind of where it started. And I never launched a video on social media. I was still scared of the camera, but everything that I was going through, all the dark times, the troubles and trials and that journey, I had saved those videos talking in that camera of like, in a perspective mm-hmm. of what I needed to hear, but it was from somebody else. And I would I would listen to those videos. And then I just launched one one day and so many people resonated with it and it went viral and it had comments. And mm-hmm. little did everybody know, I had 300 of those videos saved. So I just constantly kept wow. launching them. Oh. And they're like, 
And then six months down the road, I launched one in uniform. So now I had already had over half a million of followers that resonated with my story and my journey and what I was saying and what I was going through. And I seen the struggle and pain through the comments and the DMs and the emails from everybody. And then once I re people realized that I was a service member, they're like, wow, he is actually really putting himself out there. And we're kind of intrigued that um, and wanting to see what happens with his journey. So I was able to really connect with people through that aspect wow. of it. Did you ask permission to do that before you did it? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I left it all. That's one of those things where I had full faith yeah. in the Lord and, and was willing to, if their career had to end because of what I had to say on what I had to go through wow. um, and how uh, God was changing my life and I was willing to hang up my uniform and put it in the closet and never look back. And wow. I think now, nowadays looking back on it it was the best decision that i made because i think if it was left up to ryan he yeah. he wouldn't have done it you know yeah. like I, I was still scared but it was god saying hey no don't ask Th this yeah. is me you do this and then we'll figure out the plan afterwards and then and now i mean i'm at a division level with um legal advisors i work with the pao team and everybody sees the content and i got full-on approval and i've had no issues with the army telling me that i cannot do what i'm doing yeah that's so rich and it actually i think invites people in to the army I know that seems yeah. kind of weird. They're like, oh gosh, he's got all his PTSD. He's got all these mental health things. And that is definitely a part of it. But it allows people to know that they get to be themselves, even in a place where it seems so regimen and that yeah. that identity is going to be taken from you. It, it really invites them into the brotherhood of what, and I say brotherhood. I know a lot of women are in the army too. I'm just saying that in, in the context of we are sons right. and daughters, right? Um, so the, I just think that there's so much to that. And the fact that you had already developed all of those things, not knowing again, like this is where God is in the details. God's like, mm -hmm. record this for yourself, record this for right. yourself. And he uses all things for good. And look what yeah. it's done to the other side of that. I wanted to ask mm -hmm. a question about the DMs because as a coach, and I am I do something mm -hmm. totally different than you, but uh, in the context of not only business coaching, but I find myself life coaching all the time. Mm -hmm. I've been asked to life coach for people and I take women on retreats that have nothing to do with business, but I have found that there's this precursor to people who are effective in business and can truly activate is that they have mm -hmm. to be able to activate their identity first, the, who right. they are. And so when you have all these DMs and you have all these comments and you've got people who are telling you about their perspective on suicide, their potential suicide, or mm -hmm. the nightmares that they're having, or the spouse that is dealing with such things, you're not a therapist. And right. yet I know that you can utilize the word to cut through any jargon in that regard or any mm -hmm. enemy's tactics. How do you present yourself in that regard? And what is kind of your methodology around it? Yeah, it was, it was very scary, especially being known as a service member, um, by degree, by, by default, I am not a therapist and I never proclaimed to be, I mean, I, I think that was the, the, by regulation and the legal side of it, where I was the, the, the most scared, I think is because I had all these messages, all these emails, all these soldiers, um, and it was good and bad, you know, I had a lot that had a lot of positive message, uh, messages, but there was a lot that was very heartfelt and that it took a toll on me because I didn't realize how much pain and suffering that these soldiers and these service members had until I started reading them for myself because I had never dealt with that. I've always uh, just dealt with my own issues um, and nobody else. So having those soldiers and them reach out to me, it, it was scary reading some of the messages and some of the DMs. And that's when I really had to start taking it serious, serious because I was like, hey, this isn't just a me thing. This is a nationwide thing and i was able to get the help that i needed first um and know the way to get help so i had so many uh outliers that were uh, able to really fill me in on the direct the the way to direct soldiers in um the utilization that we have in the army so after i was able to get the help that i needed I had so many resources and so many people to point them in the right direction to get those soldiers, to get civilians, individuals help um, that I really didn't even know was a thing until I went through the process. So I think going through that process myself and finding that help was able to give me that in my toolbox and my arsenal when somebody did reach out. It's like, hey, this is what I've done. Yeah. Um, I'm not telling you that it's going to work. And, and I'm not a therapist by no means, but this is what I've done and, and it helped me.